multiple choices must be made. The B cell progenitors develop in the bone marrow, um, progressing from a pro B cell to a pre B cell. And the main defining feature of a pro B cell is that um, we basically starting off in the germline and we're going to go ahead and start making heavy chain genes. And then once we're at a pre B cell, we've already have the heavy chain gene made, which once we're there, we're going to start making a light chain. So I'll just go ahead and say, uh, with pro B cell, we have making heavy chains. We say H chain, and for pre B cell, we're all about making the light chain. In the light chain, <laughs> hopefully you can see that that's the word chain there. Uh, and then this comes together to make an immature B cell expressing a membrane bound IgM. Uh, and then after that, we're going to develop further into a mature B cell, which is going to be expressing both membrane IgM and IgD. And this is the final stage that's going to occur in the periphery within a few days after leaving the bone marrow. Uh, and then go off to fight an infection if, if, if need be. Okay, so the things that you'll see with both B cells and T cell development is this concept of positive and negative selection occurring. So positive selection, as its name kind of sounds, it's, it's where we're only letting the ones who are reactive, ones that are positive on their test, um, survive. And so this depends upon a weak response to a self-antigen um, and the reason for this is to make sure that it's going to be interacting with um, compounds. With it's going to interact, it's going to bind things. It's going to promote the maturation and cell survival. This is going to ensure the functional integrity of the B cell receptor. We'll talk about this later. Uh, and then the naive B cells are going to require continuous low-level B cell receptor engagement for their survival in the periphery. Because if they're not being used, like if they're not being activated, uh, they're just going to kill themselves, right? If you don't use it, you lose it in biology. Um, so negative selection, as, it's, as it says, we're letting the ones that don't react, ones that test negative, survive. And so we're going to remove anything that's really self-reactive. Um, but, but this is a really taxing thing to do, so we don't want to necessarily kill these, these B cells that we put a lot of in, uh, invested a lot of energy to train. So we may try to save them by receptor editing, which we'll talk about later. Um, but ultimately, if that doesn't work, we're just going to have to kill them. Receptor editing is uh, where, because of the structure of the light chain genes, we can have continuous uh, shuffling and rearrangement to try to see if, if at the first time the receptor didn't work, um, maybe the second time it will, or the third time it will, depending on the identity of these. In the case of B cell development, it's a little bit more limited than what you have with T cells. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if none of this stuff works, the B cells are going to end up being killed because... We can't let a dangerous criminal walk the streets, if you could think of it that way. Um, so the developments that we have in the bone marrow, and then we have the six phases going on. Um, these first two, phase one and phase two, is happening in the bone marrow. And that's horrible handwriting, I know, but this is kind of, we're basically in the process of making our, uh, our, our B cell receptor and then testing to see how effective it is and if it's going to react uh, with self antigens first and then the rest of these phases three four five and six are all happening in the secondary lymphoid uh, so basically the lymph nodes right positive selection um, recirculation um, activation clonal expansion differentiation into memory and plasma cells this is all stuff that you probably already remember from the beginning but let's just review it for now so the first one that we have is the stages that are happening in the bone marrow. This consists of phase one and phase two. And in phase one, basically what's going on, if you could think of it at 30,000 feet, is where the B cells are going to require a functional B cell receptor. So B cell receptors are being made. For phase two, this is the process of negative selection. And in negative selection, the only ones that are going to, I guess, survive are the, those that test negative. So what we're doing is we're going to kill any uh, reactive, uh, self-reactive uh, B cells. Now this may seem harsh at first, but keep in mind that um, in, when you have the process of negative uh, selection, you have clonal deletion, but before that, we have the chance to save them by receptor editing. 
and then clonal deletion is kind of the last straw. So these ones that are self-reactive, we've given them every chance that we could for them to become functional members of our B-cell society. So the next stages are really taking place in the lymph nodes, in the secondary. Bone marrow is primary. These are secondary lymphoid tissues. Here we're going to have phase three take place. I'm glad I could fit that in there. And phase three is uh, we had negative selection here. Now we're going to have positive selection. And so this is kind of weird, but just to be sure that we're having some type of simulation going on to maintain um, the activity of our cells, this is based off of the only ones that are going to react are going to be the ones that are the most kind of reactive, competing for active sites at the lymph nodes, competing for attention, I guess, if you think of it at the lymph nodes, um, because of a weak response to self-antigens. Keep in mind that we've already killed the ones that are going to cause a really strong responses. We're just doing the ones that are uh, going to be aggressive enough to be have active binding. This is so that we can maintain a functional B-cell receptor. So I'm say functional BCR maintenance, and also to help with maturation process. All right, so phase four is the next thing that's happening in the lymph nodes, phase number four. And this is where we have just lymphatic uh, recirculation. So we're going in, <laughs> the, B the immature B cells are going in, and they're really just cycling in and out of the lymphatic system. So lymphatic recirculation of the immature B cells. And then let's, so let's say that it keeps going along there. And then eventually, though, it gets presented with an antigen by a dendritic cell or a B cell, or a, not a, well, I mean, it can be a B cell, but most likely a dendritic cell or a macrophage. And then we enter into phase five. This is where the immature B cell is going to meet an antigen presenting cell. Uh, which, as its name kind of implies, is going to give us two things, right? What are the two consequences of antigen presentation? Well, clonal uh, selection and then clonal expansion. So if it's in phase five, it's already passed uh, the process of being clonally selected. And then the next one um, this is kind of connecting it to phase six, but oh well, it's, it's the process of clonal expansion. So for phase six, I'm going to go ahead and just draw phase six as a, a huge arrow connecting it um, to the process of clonal expansion. Um, phase six is where we're differentiating into plasma cells and memory cells. So we're going to become plasma cells, and then some are going to become memory cells after the infection takes place. So those are the, the six stages of B cell development, and that's really what we're going to be talking about for the next series of videos.